Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Good morning, Bells, Falls, and Keen, and welcome to The Feed with Mike and Marty. We're here today with Keith Mark. We're, we're going to be talking about Next Stage Arts and the programs that they're doing this summer. But before we continue, we want everyone to know that this show is broadcast live from FAC TV studios in Bellows Falls. FAC TV is a community access center that provides studio space and production services free of charge to community members in Southern Vermont and Keene. If you're interested in creating your own show, already producing content and wishing to submit it, or want to stay informed about news and events in Southern Vermont and Keene, including live coverage of local town meetings, sporting events, and community news, visit factdate.com. How about that? You're getting, I'm so getting good better, you're getting at, that, better at that every week, yes. I like to get dramatic about it. <laughs> visit factdate.com. <laughs> anyway, Keith. Oh, wait a minute. Local, local events, events first, sorry. So local events at the Bellows Falls Opera House this weekend is Deadpool and Wolverine. Now I'm a huge yeah. Deadpool fan. Yes. I don't know much about Wolverine, but it sounds I hear like it's going to be funny. It's good. It's box office grossing like yeah. crazy amounts yeah. of money. Um, so that runs through August 13th. The classic movie is, I think it's, this is the last in the anime series, um, or the anime festival series, and it's The Boy and the Heron. And that is sponsored by Rockingham Roasters. This Friday night, the Rockingham Rec Department is doing its annual carnival. The carnival is from 6 to 9 p.m. It's at the Rockingham Rec Center. Um, wristbands, you can get $20 for a wristband, um, $5 for 10 tickets, or $10 for 20 tickets. So there's like a bounce house. I'm guessing there's some games you can play. There's food. Ice cream. Um, ice cream. I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> there's, Sorry. Um, there's, I think there's face painting and some other things. And then one of the big events is because this is a family event, um, as some of you may or may not know, that Parks Place collaborates with the library. And they offer, on a regular level, they offer family dinners where families can come and there'll be child care provided so the adults can have conversation and the kids can have something to do. They get a meal and then the, I believe they try to bring in like a speaker or a program so there's something pertinent. But the folks that are organizing it, Parks Place and the library, they want to know what people want to see, what they want to know about, um, what nights are good, what nights are not good. Um, so they're going to do like a little informal survey, but they're going to draw you to doing that survey because they're going to have an ice cream bar. <laughs> <laughs> so free ice cream Sunday bar with ice cream um, that's been donated by Dairy Joy. Um, I'm sure there's other donations, but that was the only one that stuck in my head. Um, there'll be all kinds of toppings you can put on it. And um, Sam will be there, Sam Howard will be there, and some I think some of her staff to talk about, to talk to the families and mm -hmm. find out, just take a, like an informal survey. So it, it seems like a win-win, and that is happening at the Rec Department Carnival on Friday night. And that's kind of kicking off the whole of Old, old Home Days. Mm -hmm. So Old Home Days is on Saturday. And even though it's still called Old Home Days, it's kind of like a Old day. Home. <laughs> Old Home Day. <laughs> um, so there'll be the, the biggest thing is the culmination with the fireworks. But there'll be events down at the Waypoint Center, live music. Intercept. Intercept. You had Floyd here talking all about that last week. Um, I think there's a bounce house. I think there's, again, vendors, food vendors, craft vendors, um, different things for people to do. Popcorn. I think, um, what is it? Cotton candy. Cotton candy, thank you. <laughs> we could be in a game show. Yeah. Like cotton candy. Um, that's happening um, from 1 to 9 on Saturday. And then on Sunday, if you really want to round out the weekend at the Bells Falls Opera House, is the second in the Ray Masuko's concert series. Um, it's not a concert, it's actually a comedy event, and it's Garrison Keeler. And tickets are limited. So um, I would get them now if you want one. Um, the door, doors open at 1, and the show starts at 2. Okay. And don't forget, the original reason for Old Home Days was the pilgrimage to the meeting house. Oh, yeah, yeah. I first forget that, that. It never gets, yeah, everybody You're forgets You're much more of a it. history buff than I, I so yeah. I but there'll be a pilgrimage to the meeting house, uh, the Rockingham Meeting House, which is the oldest governmental building operating in Vermont. Oh. 
Yes, and um, they're doing. A, I'm, I'm sure they're doing a program and like a potluck sort of thing. So check that out too. Okay, so that's the and you're right. That is the originally why that was kind of like the big thing. Then it became then it became the fireworks. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you want to miss the fireworks, like if you want to yeah. be out of town, then I think there's something happening Saturday night <laughs> with Next Stage. Am yeah. I right? <laughs> That's true. Uh, so yeah, we're we're in the middle of our bandwagon summer series. Um, it's a pleasure to be back with you guys. Yeah. It's it's um, always inspiring to hear all the things that are happening in Bellows Falls. Um, I think you guys do a really wonderful job as a community, both not just. Uh, participating but also organizing and so um, we're actually in conversation with uh, the, the town of Bellows Falls to bring one of our bandwagon shows up here in September. Oh, nice. Yeah nice. so uh, we just did a site visit the other day and we're working out the details but we're working with Gary Fox Nice. And um, yeah, so we've done nine shows already with this year's bandwagon summer series. Uh, ten more to go and we will go to mid-October uh, this is our fourth annual official bandwagon with really kind of the fifth year mm -hmm. because the first year was in 2020 where we were just oh, yes. doing free outdoor co uh, concerts. <laughs> doing what you could. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, this year we have more sponsors than we've ever had before. <coughs> the artists that we've brought mm -hmm. in, I think, are even more dynamic than they were last year. Um, you know, if I can just sort of list some of our local sponsors, please, they're, you please. know, the yearly sponsors. Um, so our alcohol sponsors are Bar Hill and Lawson, so two Vermont amazing companies that mm -hmm. really care about this state. And then we have Oak Meadow Homeschooling and the Grammar School in Putney. Um, and then The Porch has been a sponsor um, almost from the beginning, so The Porch. And then we have M&T Bank, which was, you know, they've purchased peoples and so they've carried mm -hmm. the tradition. And, nice. and we also have uh, the Reformer and the Commons have been really great media partners for us. And, you know, coming up in the second half, we have Southern Vermont Solar, Confluence Acupuncture, um, there's a weekly heat pumps. So it's, it's becoming seen uh, like locally with mm -hmm. the local businesses and the state and regional businesses as being something to participate in. And audience and attendance has been through the roof. We've had better numbers this year than we had last year. That's awesome. Um, last, last week, well, last week we had Bombay Ricky, this group from New York, came up. But the week before was a, a, a duo, um, a Mexican electronic duo called Papa and a cumbia group from Colombia called the Meridian Brothers. Mm -hmm. We had over 650 people. Wow, wow. nice. So. Should, we, um, should we show the video yes. so people could kind of see the Let's, venue so and then we can, can talk about, sure. like, we can talk about the, the nuts and bolts, but I think it's good to give people a visual yeah, of what I, to expect. Sure, this is from a couple of years ago, the Slavic Soul Party. <laughs> It's amazing. What yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah, what's nice about it is that we get to go to different venues. So that one is at the Retreat Farm. Mm -hmm. um, but we do, you know, we, we last year we came to Bellows Falls and did something by the uh, power station. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Cooper Field on Sand Hill Road in Putney. We do stuff in West River Park in Brattleboro. We've done things at Living Memorial Park. And the Putney Inn is sort of our, you know, between Putney Inn and Cooper Field are sort of our, our home venues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've gone as far as New Fane. And we've, you know, we, we, we enjoy being able to engage with different parts of the region. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's been great. It's been really a wonderful ride. Um, I think the bandwagon has, has brought a lot of attention to Southern Vermont. I will say that um, in January, I was in New York for a performing arts conference, and I was shocked at how many people I went to introduce myself to. And when I said Next Stage, like, oh, we've, I, I, I keep seeing Next Stage pop up. So it's great to be in New York That's, and yeah. have people yeah. be aware. Yeah, and I think good. the bandwagon artists are, are particularly um, driving some of that because of the, the name recognition. You know, we can, we, we, we're not bound by uh, seating capacity like we are. Mm -hmm. When we're in Putney in the theater, That's true. it's like That's true. we can only sell so many tickets mm -hmm. and so it limits the budget, whereas the bandwagon allows us to stretch a little bit more. So, And also it's it's nice because it, from looking at the list that you've, the list of artists that you've had, you seem to bring a very wide array of artists that maybe people wouldn't necessarily like think about seeing, but they know that the, the bandwagon is always gonna be a fun time, mm -hmm. like, and it's multi-generational, which you can see in, from the video. And so why not take a chance, right? And so then you're like, oh wow, like you, is that how you discover? Because I know you no, like Slavic Soul. Is that, I do, is that but I like I like Slavic Soul Party back from the '90s. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, you, I was saying I was the, probably the only person in the room that has a Slavic Soul Party CD. At I, home. I'm probably the only person that has CDs at home. <laughs> <laughs> so CDs, you're all right, but I, I think what you're getting at though is that. Uh, we've really leaned into diversity, mm -hmm. like ethnic, yes. racial, cultural, stylistically. You know, I mean, I'm just taking notes. I've got my notes here, but like, you know, this weekend is uh, Glenn David Andrews from New Orleans. Slavic Soul Party is like Balkan Brass. Myra Flynn, uh, who's a Vermont Public um, uh, producer and host uh, of a, a show on Vermont Public, that's like soul and R&B. The Souls of Duende that are coming. It's three women from who come from different countries, and it's live music. But they bring tap, flamenco, and an Indian style oh, of dance man. together. So oh, it's wow. dance is there. Reverend Vince Anderson and his love choir is like funk and gospel, by nice. fronted by an ordained reverend who preaches like love through <laughs> funk and soul music. And then La Sonora Mazarin, which might be the show we bring to Bellas Falls, is Cumbia. Cyril Baptista is a well-known Brazilian percussionist who's played with like Sting and Peter Gabriel and. Uh, Paul Simon and and Trey Anastasio from Fish, and then Yemen Blues is a group that mixes like Arabic funk. Uh, Jacob Jolliffe is like bluegrass, and then One Beat is a is an organization that um, brings 20 international musicians to America twice a year, and pairs them with five American musicians, and they go into residency for a month, and write music, and then they go on tour, and so we are picking up their. New England tour dates. Oh, wow. That's really great. So, and that's that's just what's coming up, you know. And we had, you know, a guy from Dominican Republic mm -hmm. and like Jewish kind of klezmer, and this is like combo de guerre was like French chanson, and then the Villalobos brothers here are a Mexican trio of virtuosic uh, violinists doing a very new take on Mexican music. So, like the whole thing for us is how can we speak to so many different genres of music and expose people to things that they may not come to. But the bandwagon, kids are always free. Um, every public library has free passes, so the Rockingham Library has mm -hmm. passes you can check out. We've This year, uh, through a grant from the United Way, we've expanded uh, access, so all types of organizations, the Women's Freedom Center and um, the Root Social Justice Center and um, Different, different public, uh, uh, the, the Putney Food Shelf gets tickets. Mm -hmm. And so through getting access and kids are free and it's a beautiful time to like come out and see friends, people bring picnics and blankets and um, and then you get to hear music and doing what we love to do in Vermont, which is like mm -hmm. exp be in nature and, and right. have that. Fantastic. Yes. It's like the perfect summer thing to do, you know, because the weather is always great, and then you get to listen to great music. It's not always great. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, I'm pretty sure we're in like a rain pattern right well, now. But we do. <laughs> but we, we always move the shows indoors, mm -hmm. and so like we had a group from Maine come a couple weeks ago called Bondeco, and Bondeco is, um, and you know, musicians from around the world that have gotten together in near Portland and they are um, each contributing their kind of heritage and culture to the to the creation of these songs. 
and we had we had them and people were going to come out and we had to because of rain we had to move it in the theater but we had 180 sure. people in the theater sure. which is like a packed house yeah. Yeah. yeah so all the shows get moved indoors into if putting there's rain. if there's yeah. rain yeah. it's nice that you had that option because a lot of times um i think they have to cancel or postpone or yeah. like late mm-hmm. open doors and all that kind of stuff yeah. but um i think it's it's great to it's an opportunity that i think I don't know how to, how to put it, that that probably wouldn't, like, I don't know anybody else that's, that's doing, that's bringing the diversity of music oh, yeah, it's amazing. and making it very publicly available so that people can learn about other cultures. And that's one yeah. way to really learn about culture and heritage is, is through music because a lot of times mm-hmm. it's storytelling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that, that for me, growing up, um, you know, in suburbia, um, music was my portal to understanding history and culture and politics and civics and um, you know I, I, I learned a lot from listening to punk and hip-hop and, and as a kid and then going back and exploring music from the 60s and civil rights and mm-hmm. and you know you're listening to you know Marvin Gaye and, and it's like funky but there's also a deep message in it mm-hmm. and so I think that as I, I see my like I'm I get to I get the glorious job of being a gatekeeper to culture to coming into this region, and there's a certain sense of responsibility that I feel like, um, you know, I have young kids, and, and my friends who have kids really appreciate the conversations that come from the day after the shows, mm-hmm. right? Oh, why, you know, my uh, so for example, Bondeco, um, I remember my son turning around to me, and one of the musicians was blind. Mm-hmm. He's like, is he blind? Yeah, Mm -hmm. and it sort of just like opened up this new category in his head. And the next day at breakfast, we were talking about like what it means to be blind and to be a blind musician and Mm -hmm. how that might you know affect him. And um, and so yes, there's the art that happens on stage, but then there are the beautiful moments of seeing how you brought this artist to this community, and all of a sudden. There are these like ripple effects mm-hmm. of conversations and ideas. And we've had people come back and say, wow, well, you brought this artist and I had no idea of their culture. I did a bunch of research and I read this book and now I'm really excited about, you know, or even going on a trip to explore more. Mm-hmm. It's like, wow, like music, music can really open music up. Music is a big connector. Yeah. I really think that it can like, it's maybe one thing sometimes that people can agree upon yeah. without getting like, chew into it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know yeah, there is no, you're right it's, yeah. if you think about it like what brings people together on mass you say music music or food or, well but I'm thinking like like when when do people gather like in an arena or in this thing it's politics it's sports or it's art and culture mm-hmm. and politics and sports are very divisive mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. whereas a little bit you know, whereas, you know, you don't see people going to fisticuffs over, like, you like bluegrass? I'm Not never. usually. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes, yeah. but you're right. You're right. And, I, you know, sometimes, like, it's even, um, it's even just taking a chance. Like, like I think, what are tickets? For, like, $25? 20 $20? 20, $20. Right. So, for $20, which is um, less than the cost of, like, a pizza, you can go have a night out, and you can take a chance on like finding a new music style right. that you like and you're again you're outdoors and and it, you know it's just it's the quintessential vermont or summertime thing i guess not just vermont but yeah. summertime to, to that point though too is that like i think that we need to sort of cu- cultivate a culture of curiosity mm-hmm. where where we're sort of you know, it seems like it's bleeding away a little bit um in our culture where you know, people will only come out to the things that they know. Mm-hmm. Someone will say, oh, I love music. But if you like really look at their like ticket buying pattern, if you don't love music, you love nostalgia, right? You love, mm-hmm. the, you love the things you know. Yeah. You don't really want to come out and like be a sonic explorer. And when we're younger, our ears are so wide open. And as we get older, I think it's, we have to practice. Uh, uh, it, it becomes a practice of keeping our ears open um, and exploring new things. And sometimes you go to see things that you may not like, but at least you can wrestle with what about it you didn't mm-hmm. like. Um, and we at Next Stage, and, and me personally, I'm working very hard to cultivate a, a good curation of trust 
Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I work really hard to make sure that the artists we present, it may not be your thing, but mm -hmm. you can appreciate the aesthetics of like, mm -hmm. oh, the talent, the virtuosity. And so I have seen people come to not just the bandwagon shows, but even into the next stage shows in general, because they, they the, the brand of next stage, the personal brand that I'm putting out there, it's it's growing and Barry Stockwell who works at Next Age who has mm -hmm. for many many years mm -hmm. has that with his Twilight music mm -hmm. series yep. and so people know that if Barry's bringing in you know a new band it's it's going to be good or if I'm going to bring in a new artist it's going to be good to come out and take a risk and I would love to see this region sort of embrace that culture of curiosity um, and it's not just for live music it could be NECA and the circus shows mm -hmm. it could be going to see art new art shows and art openings but you know really really like leaning towards like I don't know what this is going to be and I'm okay with that yeah and I, like That's I said the, just yeah. the, the yeah. events themselves even if you don't maybe so you go with a group of friends even if you, even if the music isn't your thing it's still a night it's still a fun event right the music can kind of be happening yeah. maybe you're not totally tuned into it but you're sitting with a group of friends and you're you know maybe you have one of the honey bear things from bar hill and you know you get some food and you just have a nice time so yeah. there's a lot more of that as well how do you like what's your process for like are you beginning now to start look for next year or how does that all work i i try to hold it a day <laughs> like because uh, there are people already asking um we are now booking you know, when I came, there wasn't really a rhythm to booking. And so we put a rhythm in place and the bandwagon has really helped with that rhythm. So we start in January when we come back from New Year's and we have to get everything ready to launch in mid-May by beginning of April so we can start promoting. Mm -hmm. um, so that January, February, March, into bleeding into April, we're like scrambling to fill the calendar mm -hmm. and figure that out. Now we're booking out into probably like to be honest, like April, May of next year. So we're actually kind of like at the point where we could start looking at. Um, I try to, to to not go there yet, mm -hmm. but it takes probably six months to put everything together and things are still falling into place. But we, you know, you have to have the big pieces in like mm -hmm. the dates, the artists, the venues, um, and then you have to negotiate all the contracts and get mm -hmm. those in and deposits in. And so there's a lot of um, behind the scenes bookkeeping that needs to happen in order for us to be able to start promoting. So it, but it does, I mean, it is an all year kind of thing. And the bandwagon, you know, we have a truck that needs maintenance. The bandwagon needs maintenance. <laughs> we have tents that we travel with. I mean, essentially we're a small staff of, you know, staff at Next Age and we hire some production support and work on volunteers. But essentially we're producing a festival every yeah. week. So it's it's you know getting the band practice, you know, who's you know, making sure the grass is mowed, making sure that the tents aren't leaking, if you know, just to just you know, that there's they're, they're, they're gonna work. Um, we load the bar and all the concessions mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. we need to keep up with the stock. And so there's a lot of behind the scenes things that sort of are, again, if, if we do our job well, you don't ever feel it, right? Um, Which I, I have never, so I had no idea you guys yeah. did that. Yeah, so, so, so you know, uh, and, and it, there's just a lot of things going on, but it, it's, you know, you see in the video all the joy people are having, yeah. and the kids. Um, I, I think it's one of the most multi-generational things that I've been to in this region that, that happens consistently. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, we have the blue blocks there for the kids to play with, and so the, and the hula hoops this year, and, uh, thanks to an artist named Amber Paris, um, who introduced that uh, to our kids zone, um, and so so there's there's a lot going on. So yeah, so to answer your question, I'm trying to hold it at bay. <laughs> like, I think I can go a few more months of just sort of like coasting, enjoying. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, there's other things at next stage that we're working on. So, so my question is. Do the artists come to you, or do you go to the artists, or is there a, a is that a blend now? Because you've had such such success with people, I would think that they would say, "Oh, this is a good gig to do in the summer because I get to go to Vermont and we have fun and we play, and maybe I can get some other jobs up yeah. there." Is that what happens? Or it's, it's more art than science. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I'm I have cultivated personal relationships with artists and agents. Um, so I, I rely a lot on other people's opinions too, mm -hmm. to bring in artists. So when somebody I know says, you guys should book these guys, or um, th there's a booking age, actually the artist that we're gonna potentially bring to Bellas Falls, 
um, the booking agent is a gentleman who owns a venue in New York called Barbez, which is like anything happening at Barbez is cool. Um, oh, they're, really? they're the standard bearer in, in New York, uh, one, one of the go-to places. And Olivier, who, who owns Barbez, whenever he's bringing an artist, I just I trust him implicitly. Mm -hmm. so, sort of what you were talking about yourself, but that that's the reputation you try to build. That it's like, oh, I don't even need to think about this. I could just yeah. I you know, ideally the artist has some level of quality marketing materials. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always say that their art is my product that I have to go sell. Yeah. Um, so if you know, I want an artist to have invested in themselves to help me market their 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 music. Um, so. There's a certain level of virtuosity we're looking for. There's a certain level, you know, does it fit the diversity scale, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there have been times where it's like, man, that's a great artist, but we already have two of that style, yeah, or two, yeah, it's yeah. close, and we wanna make sure that we don't oversaturate uh, any particular genre, especially in the bandwagon. So that, unfortunately, we got too involved in the conversation, but that's probably a good, good. A good topic to yeah. end on. Um, and I <laughs> well, do... a good topic to end on is, do you need volunteers, yes. and then... always. Always. You, and how so, do they, I think that we have a screen that they can, how they can contact you. Yeah, it's Next. either info at nextstagearts.org or nextstagearts.org. There's a website. Um, every every ticketing page, uh, you can buy tickets and we have a certain number of volunteer slots that people can oh, sign up for. So, or just write us and happy to communicate. Perfect. Well, thanks for everything that you do. And looking forward to, um, let us give us the information on when you get the information on the Bells Falls one, and we'll be sure to help promote it. I will. Yeah. Thank you so that's much for best. having me Thank and you. promoting this stuff. All right. Bye, and that's it. We'll see you next week, community. Local news, politics, business, sports, arts, music, podcast.